Guiding you to the leaders in our community. This is Comcast Newsmakers. Hello, I'm Robin Wolfram. Well, the city of St. Paul recently prevented gang disruption of two popular neighborhood festivals through an innovative use of a new legal tool, the Civil Gang Injunction Statute. And here to talk about this innovative approach is St. Paul City Attorney John Choi. John, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me on today. Absolutely. Well, this is a very fascinating story. Normally, one thinks of gangs as being outside the arm of the law, but yet here we have a civil injunction that prevented violence. Tell us how this all works. Well, essentially what it is, is a, a lawsuit. And what the statute that was passed in 2007 by the Minnesota legislature authorizes a city attorney, a county attorney, or an attorney, the attorney general, to, to civilly sue a criminal gang based upon a public nuisance theory and then obtain an order uh, that would you know, protect the community from certain types of criminal gang activity. Mm -hmm. And have you seen this in act? Has it, has it actually happened? Have, it, have we utilized it? Yeah, and we were successful in uh, three lawsuits. And mm -hmm. what we focused on were our community festivals. Mm -hmm. uh, and two that are very important to St. Paul are Cinco de Mayo mm -hmm. and the Rondo Days Festival. Yeah. And uh, previously there was a, a shooting that occurred at the Cinco de Mayo Festival. So we started with that one and mm -hmm. we commenced a lawsuit. And we presented evidence that suggested that, you know, proved that this Serenial 13, which was a defendant in the case, was in fact a criminal gang, mm -hmm. that they were a public nuisance, and then got an order prohibiting 10 individuals mm -hmm. who were the leaders of the Serenial 13 from actually associating with each other within a certain geographic area, which essentially was where the Cinco de Mayo mm -hmm. festival happened. And for a, basically about a 38 hour period during the time in which the festival was in place. And we had great results from that. And we also had great results from the Rondo Days Festival where we were again able to obtain an order from the judge after submitting all the evidence to get a, another order that prohibited gangs from uh, members uh, from associating with one another. Doesn't this actually, preventing certain individuals from attending a public festival, doesn't that just counter a titch with civil liberties rights? Well, you know, there are some people that will have problems with this, but ultimately from a public safety perspective, I really believe, and what we're trying to prove here is that the criminal gang is a public nuisance. And so the uh, the majority or the people that are there to enjoy the festival have the right to be free sure. from gang activity and gang violence. And that's ultimately what we're trying to protect because ultimately if we wait until mm -hmm. there's a homicide, mm -hmm. a gang related some incident that occurs or that disrupts the community, mm -hmm. then we're too late. Mm -hmm. And I think this is just another tool in the toolbox of law enforcement to utilize to be proactive and get out in front of a problem when we believe that there could be a problem. In, at the Cinco de Mayo Festival the year before there was a shooting for the Rondo's Day Parade, we you know, basically had an escalation of violence between right. two rival gangs that was spilling into our community. So we had to put a stop to it. Do you think it'll continue to be successful? Yeah, I mean, I think that you never know what the future will hold, but the important thing is that this is a tool that mm -hmm. law enforcement can use, but I think also we need to be looking at prevention and all of those things as well. Right, so let's talk about this, the disbanding of the state gang strike force. It continues to be in the news, kind of headlining yeah. all across the metro yeah. area. Has this affected St. Paul's gang violence prevention efforts in general? You no, know, in, in the sense that the St. Paul Police Department has its own gang unit. So when we focused on building this case, we utilized the professionals in the police in our own police department. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that you know what's happening with respect to what we're reading about about the Metro Gang Strike Force, mm -hmm. and when you see cops becoming robbers, mm -hmm. uh, we have certainly lost our way. So we need to get that right and figure that out. But I think another key point is is that. Gang violence in our community is not limited to St. Paul or right. Minneapolis. This really is a metropolitan issue and a statewide issue. So uh, whatever we can do to coordinate and get everything back together, I think is really imperative. So I hope that uh, the powers that be will do that. John Choi, City Attorney for St. Paul, thank you. And congratulations on your efforts. It certainly sounds like it's making a difference, and let's hope it continues to do so. Thanks, Robin. You bet. Well, for more information about St. Paul Public Safety, visit the city's website at stpaul.gov. And you can also contact the office of the St. Paul City Attorney, and the number is 651-266-8710. Well, that's it for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robin Wolfram. Thanks for watching.